Ms Galloway. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Tenakwe, um, Mr Galloway. Oh, tenakwe, Mr Speaker. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak on this fine piece of legislation uh, that has drawn uh, unanimous support from around the House. Uh, the, uh, the purpose of this legislation has been well canvassed by uh, the members who have uh, spoken uh, before me. Um, ultimately, what this comes down to is um, allowing the Red Cross and Red Crescent movement to be able to do their job uh, wherever they go around the world. And it is, uh, I suppose, um, in itself a symbol of exactly how powerful symbols and language are uh, no matter what culture uh, we, we talk about around the world. Uh, and the fact that uh, the Red Cross and Red Crescent movement hasn't been welcome uh, in some parts of the world because of the symbols that are used and the connotations uh, that go with them, uh, just really, to me, um, un uh, underlines just how important uh, language and symbology still is, um, e even in this day and age. Of course, uh, at what we know is that the original Red Cross uh, was developed as, as the inverse of the flag of Switzerland, um, a nation known, a, uh, a symbol, uh, if you will, uh, of peace uh, and, um, uh, and of neutrality. Uh, and that was the original meaning behind uh, the Red Cross. But, of course, uh, it's, it's only natural, uh, I would think, in non-Christian countries uh, to recognise the cross as a Christian symbol. And, of course, the first um, addition to the Red Cross that was made was the Red Crescent uh, during the Russo-Turkish War uh, between 1876 and 1878. And, the, and that was picked up by the Ottoman Empire, and, and the Red Crescent then spread uh, amongst the Muslim world. But, of course... The world is not uh, simply a dichotomy of Christianity and Islam. Uh, there are uh, many other religions and many other movements out there. And so what we're, what we're trying to achieve here uh, is to provide a symbol that um, can cross cultural borders as well as geographic borders. Uh, it's not the first attempt to come up with a, um, a third protocol. Uh, other members have uh, mentioned the Red Shield uh, or the Red Star of David, um, which of course uh, is really only works in, in one country and works for one country and has exactly the same connotations uh, as the Red Cross and Red, Red Crescent have uh, for many other nations and religions. Uh, there have been a number of different proposals over the year. Uh, over the years, the Red Flame was proposed uh, by Siamese delegates back in 1899. Uh, Persia, we've talked about the Red uh, Lion and Sun symbol. A Red Sun symbol uh, was once proposed. A Red Lamb symbol that perhaps we would be quite comfortable with here in New Zealand uh, was proposed by the Republic of Congo. Uh, India proposed a red wheel, uh, Lebanon proposed a red cedar, Sudan proposed a red rhinoceros, uh, and Syria proposed a red palm. This is not uh, the, the total uh, number of different proposals there have been over the years, um, but, but, it, but it is a, a, a small segment of them. It just shows that this has been an issue for a long time, trying to find additional symbols um, that overcome the problem faced by the Red Cross and the Red Crescent. Interestingly, and I think this uh, talks about how symbols and language can change over time, in 1922 a Red Swastika Society was proposed. Uh, now that was proposed um, in China uh, during the warlord era. Now of course after um, the 1930s, the red swast the, the swastika, uh, its, its meaning changed dramatically uh, and probably would no longer be uh, acceptable today. Um, and, and so, you know, things can change a lot over time and we have to be uh, cognizant of that. And I think in that way the red crystal or diamond shape um, is one which hopefully will stand the test of time. But language is important, Mr Speaker, and symbols are important. And they have real meaning. And when you get the language wrong or you get the symbology wrong, 
that can be quite offensive. Now, recently, uh, we have had another red symbol, and that is the red shirt, the gay red shirt uh, that Mr Key uh, introduced into modern language here in New Zealand. Now, I, hear, I see members opposite grimacing at this, but, but they ought to. They should be embarrassed about the new symbol of the gay red shirt. But this is, this is hugely important. So, could Nikki Kay, could, Nikki Kay, could you repeat that? John Tamahiri's comments, I find them deeply offensive as well. I do find those comments offensive. Now, I want to talk about the, the symbology around a, a red shirt. And, that, and, and when you use a symbol like that, and then you go on to say that what he meant, what the Prime Minister meant by using the word gay is weird, he thinks that the term gay means weird. That is powerful. It has meaning. And, and, and exactly the same way that a cross or a crescent can be interpreted differently by people who, uh, who might see a different meaning in what was originally suggested, the same way people were offended, deeply offended, by the Prime Minister's statement that wearing a red shirt meant that a person was gay and that being gay meant that they were weird. And, and I think we have to call that out because, Mr Speaker, it's not just about... Order, it's order, not just about order. Can I just remind members that it's quite an order to interject on the person who's speaking. That's normal practice. But it is not acceptable that members interject on each other, especially when they don't have the floor. If you want to take part in the debate, you're welcome to do so. I call the Honourable Member Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Language and symbols are powerful. And our leaders, our representatives around the world, uh, and our Prime Minister is our premier spokesperson around the world, needs to be cognizant of the fact that when he uses language and symbols in the way that he did, that undermines his ability to represent New Zealand as a peace-loving uh, nation that doesn't believe in discrimination, that doesn't single people out for discrimination, which is what this symbol is all about. And we should be supporting this, because we are known around the world as a, as a nation which has been at the forefront front of peacekeeping, maintaining peace and of trying to eliminate discrimination. New Zealand has a proud history in the UN and in other fora for being a nation which leads the charge against discrimination. And it undermines that reputation and that history when our Prime Minister uses that type of language. And I think that needs to be identified, Mr Speaker. But, as I say, this, uh, this legislation uh, is one is a bill that is being supported uh, right around the House. Uh, Shane Ardern said that uh, we have to do our small part uh, as a small nation to uh, uh, reinforce the, the message behind this, that we want the Red Cross and Red Crescent movement to be able to operate across borders and across cultures. Uh, I think actually it's much more than that. The world looks to nations like New Zealand that have such a good record on these matters to show leadership. Uh, and perhaps it would have been better if we'd been able to pass this legislation a little bit earlier so that we could have been among the world's leaders on this issue, but it is good that we are finally catching up and that we're passing this legislation, uh, and Labor wholeheartedly supports this bill, sir. I call the Honourable Member, Cam Calder.